When the NWTF called me and asked me if I still wanted to hunt Merriam turkeys, I told him absolutely. And he said they wanted to do a show in Wyoming. So I come to Wyoming expecting one thing and end up with something else. I figured we'd be 60, 70 degrees during the daytime, 40s, 50s at nighttime. I figured that the birds would gobble their heads off and, uh, and it would actually, I figured it would be easy is what I figured. I figured we'd see large groups of birds. While we were coming from the airport, it's snowing. We get to where we're gonna camp at and it's five, six inches of snow on the ground. And I'm like, dude, I've never hunted turkeys in the snow before. This is gonna be a, a different trip and it's actually gonna be a treat. I mean, we are back in the hills. There is no cell service. Uh, luckily, we had all the directions wrote down on paper because we couldn't, we actually could not contact Eric Thomas on the telephone because of the fact that uh, we didn't have any cell service. There's three of us and we all had different carriers and it didn't matter. It just, you just don't have cell service when you start getting in the mountains. Turkey Call is brought to you by Mossy Oak, the official camouflage of the NWTF. Weatherby. Rifles, shotguns, ammunition. Zinc Calls, the official call of the NWTF and Turkey Call Television. Benelli, let the revolution begin. Browning, the best there is. Bass Pro, your adventure starts here. Savage Arms, the best idea in firearms since the Second Amendment. And by Mossberg. American built, American strong. If you want to find out a little more how you can get involved in helping be a mentor to the next generation, be sure to go to nwtf.org and you can find out everything that you might need to know so you can get involved. This segment of Turkey Call is presented by Avian X, the official decoy of the NWTF and Turkey Call Television. I had an opportunity to hunt the Merriam turkeys in the afternoon, my first time. Uh, the only thing I knew to do, and, and this could be a good tip to you, I pulled out a box call, and as I was walking, I would yelp, and then maybe do just uh, some slight cutting, 
to try to get a response from a gobbler, and when I did, I mean, he gobbled and he gobbled good. We uh, walked down a little ridge where it was nice and open. There's a lot of pines out in Wyoming, and we got set up against some pines. I began to call, uh, switching over to my mouth call, and then also switching back over to an aluminum call, working like there was two birds there. This bird began to get really, really fired up. I knew that he was on his way because this bird is double and triple gobbling as he's coming down the hill on the opposite side of the holler from us. Uh, finally, he makes it in to within about 50 yards, and lo and behold, and this is something to remember and to watch out for, uh, no matter what, I'm not sure what I did or how I moved, but I moved a little bit and there was a hen off to the right that had come in that we didn't see. And I'm not sure, she didn't yelp. So I don't know if she come in uh, from a different direction or she came in before the gobbler or in front of the gobbler or what happened, but she caught me. <laughs> well, there's anything we can do about that. We'll mm -hmm. get another one. No, we'll go we'll move down. Reeled them right in, you know. Try some more. Reeled them right, right in. Struck them up right away. Yeah, it didn't take much. Yeah, let's move on and we'll find another one. One of the things to remember is once you've been defeated, once you've been busted, or everything just foils completely, don't give up. What we did, we started covering more ground, and I began to call a bit more. And it took us on into the evening a little bit, but lo and behold, we heard a faint gobble. We started working our way towards that gobbler, and I'd hit him with a call. He, uh, he, he responded immediately. I felt like he was going to work, and then I heard a hen. We got set up as quick as we possibly could. And I mean, I hadn't sat there probably a minute, maybe two at the most, and I could see the gobbler. And this is what was weird. Back home, normally, the gobbler would be following the hens. But here in Wyoming, this gobbler is ahead of the hens and ahead of the jakes, and he's running to us down a fence line. And the best thing I can tell you is be ready for anything. That gobbler come in at a run. He run all the way down the fence line. And I wasn't actually close enough to the fence line uh, to where I could get a real good shot on him. And the bird went behind me and came through a hole in the fence because there was four or five strands of barbed wire. And I guess he just didn't feel like he could make it through that. That gobbler began to work around to my right. And I, I, I just couldn't believe that he was actually gonna do that. I kept working with him with purrs and clucks, just doing some soft stuff. And the more I worked with him, and I hadn't even moved my gun over that direction. Then he started working a little bit more towards me. And then as I began to move my gun, get it down in my lap and move and start to turn my whole body towards that gobbler so I could get the shot, lo and behold, here comes those jakes and that hen right out there in front of the gobbler and they began to just peck around and feed, they was completely comfortable. By me purring and clucking and just doing the soft stuff, it made them completely comfortable in that area. They wasn't, they wasn't alarmed in any way, and they wasn't going to my decoy. Maybe because I had her set up in the snow, I'm not real sure. walked up to this bird, I wasn't real sure exactly what I had. I knew I had an adult gobbler. Uh, most of your Merriams have kind of short beards because of the tough winters they have. But this bird, he had a pretty nice beard on him, probably eight inches is what I was kind of figuring, what I could see on him. And as I got up to him uh, to get down and kneel over top of him, to be able to see all the colors and, and uh, just running through his, uh, his back and his wings and his breast. and. Once it was all said and done, and I began to pack that gobbler out, I mean, there is no greater feeling, uh, no more blessed of a feeling than to be able to have everything, in my opinion, against you with the snow and the weather and the cold and, and, the, and the birds possibly might not do their thing and, and everything working out exactly the way that you want it to, there's nothing any greater. If y'all like turkey hunting as much as we do here, be sure to go to the NWTS Facebook page. Be sure to share us and like us and make sure you and your buddies are catching up on all the hot turkey hunting topics all across the country.
This segment of Turkey Call is presented by Zinc Calls, the official call maker of the NWTF and Turkey Call Television. I would describe uh, turkey hunting in Wyoming a lot like elk hunting. Um, you've got to cover some ground. I call run and gun. Uh, unless you know where they're at and you can be in there set up. That works good most of the time, but a lot of times it doesn't. And you've got to get out there and find those birds. And, uh, you know, we do a lot of walking and a lot of calling. And, you know, you strike a bird up, you pick a set up, and, and you hope it all comes together. But it is a lot like big game hunting. If you do come out here to Wyoming to do a Merriam turkey hunt, it's not going to be your typical eastern hunt. You know, a lot of people hunt 200 acres. I, I like my places to be 2,000 acres. Wyoming weather in the spring, roll the dice. You just don't know what you're gonna get. Beginning of season, our season opens the second Saturday of April. This year it was bone dry. I and mean, we had nice weather, 60 degrees, 70 degrees. Uh, birds were working good. And then a week later, Bingo, here we are, two weeks of wet, snowy weather. We're waking up five days ago to eight inches, three days ago to another eight inches, and then you get in a bunch of rain and stuff on top of that. So, I mean, you, I've seen everything in one day in the spring. I've seen hail, snow, rain, and sun. My recommendation for the beginning turkey hunter was I would get a slate call. I mean, a slate call is very easy uh, to learn and to pick up. I mean, I can show a guy how to run a slate call in about five minutes, and he can walk out, he can purr, he can cluck, he can do the yelps, soft yelps, and he can also do some of the loud yelps. I mean, depending on what you're doing with that call and how you hold your hands and what kind of sounds you're gonna get out of it, you can get the more realistic turkey sounds uh, as a beginner with a slate call. I would also get a mouth call and begin practicing on that. Whether you can use it uh, right away or not, maybe just do a couple different calls. You can learn to purr and cluck or maybe do a soft yelp. Be able to close that deal with your hands free after you set that slate call down. Use a mouth call and, and just do some soft yelp to him. just close the deal out. As we went out this morning, uh, the first thing I started feeling was the the uh, elevation <laughs> and hoping I could keep up because I'm the smallest guy here and I take nine steps, everybody's two. It, what runs through my head while we were doing this was every time we let out a yelp or we let out a crow call, it's just in, in me personally, I would feel that this is it. Bang, we're going to get that gobble. Bang, we're going to get that gobble. I never gave up hope. It just it's something inside me that won't let me stop. This is what drives me. I, I go to that positive, I do that vibe that just, every time I cast a plug, it's that when we were out there, every time Billy would yelp or hit the crow call, I'm like, this is it. This is any moment, any moment, something, something cool is gonna happen. We got to a spot and, and uh, Billy let out some yelps and we got a gobble in the valley and we started to formulate a plan to, to work this bird. We started to find a place to set up and we picked out a, a small little pasture with a good opening and we placed a decoy and we had really good cover under the, under the trees. For some reason that bird shut down and it went quiet. We, we sat for a little bit and then Billy does his, his, every five minutes he lets out a few yelps, his routine. And he goes, ooh, gobble, did you hear that? And I was like, nope. <laughs> there he is, see, right there. Underneath that pine, underneath that pine tree right there. I got it.
We want to hear from you. Share your hunting story. Be sure to hashtag it, my NWTF story. Share it so everybody can see it. And who knows, somebody here at NWTF might just send you something cool in the mail. This segment of Turkey Call is presented by Zinc Calls, the official call maker of the NWTF and Turkey Call Television. We waited and we waited on us and he, he parked off a few more yelps and boom, I heard that one. I heard that one and the excitement started. I could definitely feel my blood pressure raise up. Billy and I started talking. I said, is it Jake? No, it's a hen. It's a turkey. <laughs> and I'm waiting, and, I, and he went to strut, and he's like, no, he, he's, a, he's a long beard, and he's yours, you shoot him. Then the heart really went up. I'm like, oh, here it comes, it's on now. Instead of the instant elation, I was—I just let a breath out. I was like, "Wow, did that just happen?" Yeah, I was. Uh, it was—it was a moment. Instead of hooping and hollering, I just had to soak it all in. You know, here I am in Wyoming, filming with Billy Yargis, and and just I just took a beautiful Mary. What two hours into the hunt, it was just—I had to soak it all in. I had to, in, you know, just breathe it in before I could realize what happened. You know, I tell you what. God made these birds. I mean, he he made them beautiful as they can get. Yes, he did. They don't get any prettier than that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got some pretty birds too, with all the like you said before, with all the fluorescent colors in them and stuff like that. But these Merriams, they are they're they're about as pretty as they get. One thing I can tell you is is regardless of the weather. When you call somebody and you've got a trip plan, just go and try to have a good time. Because I'm going to tell you right now, uh, not knowing what, I, what to expect when I came to, to Wyoming, I'm, I'm telling you, uh, I've had a great time. We, I've met some new friends, and I tell you what, we've had a ball uh, being able to hunt with Philip for the first time and watch him take a gobbler. And then uh, he went with me, and, and I got to take my gobbler uh, both in the same day. It's been quite an experience and it'd be something that I'll never forget. Listen, if you're not a member of the NWTF, you need to be. Because a lot of people out there don't realize exactly what the NWTF stands for or what it means. It's helping young kids get into hunting. It's, it's helping the handicapped. It's helping women to get started into hunting. And without the NWTF, I can guarantee you, we would not have the turkeys throughout this country like we have today. Uh, they help support our conservation departments to be able to transplant turkeys. Or just like in Missouri, where I'm from in the northeast corner, we uh, have had a problem with our hatches. We don't have the turkey population we did back in the 80s and back in the 90s. And right now, the conservation department is doing a five-year study, and, and the NWTF is helping with that. They're helping fund it. And, you know, with the transmitters and stuff like that, they're making it all possible. What they're doing now with Save the Habitat, Save the Hunt is, is the most important thing. I mean, the turkey's back and it's thriving and they did a fantastic job. Um, somebody asked me one time, an old timer from the beginning, he says, now what, what do we do now? 
said, now we need to save places to hunt. Um, their initiative to save the habitat, save the hunt, and, and make sure that we get four million more hunters and on all this property, it is, uh, it is saving the future. The, the National Wild Turkey Federation is the biggest and strongest um, conservation group I've ever dealt with, and, and their, their grassroots volunteer base is, is what I thrive on. It's me. I'm, I'm the NWTF. Mm -hmm.